Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So if you don't follow me on TikTok, you probably have the slightest clue of what I am talking about or about to talk about right now. So make sure you follow me on TikTok so you can keep up with everything that I am posting. We are going to talk about BV today, bacterial vaginosis. Y'all know it's the devil and y'all know I need to change my fire. I mean my, uh, what are they called? Smoke detectors. But, um... I swear I'm gonna get around to changing my smoke detectors. I wake up in the morning and I don't even hear them until y'all say something. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna post my TikTok here. That way y'all can follow me on TikTok. If you have not been on TikTok or seen my TikTok, make sure you go to my TikTok first to look at my videos and then meet me back at this video because it will not make sense if you are not coming from TikTok. So y'all know we are here for BV. Well, basically BV is just a overgrowth of bacteria in your vajay and they say that men cannot give you BV. Um, they only say that they can cause it but they can't give it to you. It's an offset of your pH balance, your natural pH balance and when your natural pH balance is offset the imbalance creates a disgusting smell in your vagina and it is the devil. It's horrible. The worst smell you've ever smelled. I mean, I've been to the doctors before and my doctor asked me what are my symptoms and I'm like, my vagina smells like dead rats. And then when I got my paper, like when they print out your paper, your overview of your appointment, her notes actually said, she said her vagina smells like dead rats. So obviously there are many causes of um, a pH imbalance in your vagina. Um, it could be anything from your soap, your detergent, all of the things. There's a whole list of things that can cause your vagina's pH to be off. So a lot of times when you go to the doctors with BV, the doctor is going to tell you that you need to change all of these things that you're doing. I've, I feel like I'm, I've said this a million times, but since it's in the video, I'm going to say it. The doctors will tell you, you know, you need to change your soap, you need to change your detergent, you need to let your vagina breathe, you need to drink more water, you need to change your diet. All of these things a doctor will tell you. Don't have a lot of different sex partners. It's like a whole list of things a doctor will tell you of why you have BV. And they never tell you you are getting it from a man. He is giving it to you. You will never get rid of your BV unless you either get rid of him or he takes the medicine. So I make my videos to say that I know that there are people who are married and in long-term relationships and you are struggling with BV because the doctors aren't giving you answers and I've been there and it is so frustrating. It is like, I mean, I like I said in my video on TikTok, if I could sell my vagina on eBay, I would have sold it years ago because I've been so frustrated. Even at the doctors, I've been in doctor's appointments and I've walked out of doctors to put many of them. I've got up and just walked out. The moment the doctor is saying what I don't wanna hear, I get up and I walk out. I've got in, into it with the doctor before. A doctor literally told me out of her mouth, well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. And we got into it, like I've been through the ringer with BV. So I told my full BV experience and situation on TikTok. If you have not seen that video, like I said, go to my TikTok so that way you're caught up on everything. I'm not gonna tell the whole story here because it's gonna take up time. But overall, I was getting BV from my boyfriend who was not circumcised. And um, I was going to the doctors constantly. Like I said, I've been to many doctor's appointments and I was being told that it was everything that I was doing. It was what I was eating, it was um, my detergent, me, my underwear, the type of underwear I was wearing. Um, you can't wear thongs, it's because you're, you wore a thong that day or it's because you're wearing boy shorts. I mean, I've, I've had the whole list told to me. I would take all that information and I would change all those things about myself and I would come right back in the house and I would have sex with my boyfriend. And then I would get BV. And I would be at the doctor's, take my medicine, come back, have sex. At the doctor's, take my medicine, come back, have sex. And the doctor never told me, well, maybe it's your boyfriend, right? And it wasn't until I put it together, I started to pay attention to my own body, that I was realizing, okay, I'm getting this after sex, obviously. So I even tested it, I stopped having sex, and when I would stop, I wouldn't get BV at all. Once I figured that out, y'all, it was over for the doctors. I was like, oh. So at that point, I started going into my doctor's appointment, and when they would try to 
ask me, you know, well, what's wrong? What brings you here? And I'll tell them I'm getting BV from my boyfriend. I need medicine. He needs medicine. Oh, it's no way. It's no way that can happen. It's no way you can get it from your boyfriend. It's no. And we would go back and forth. And that was when the beginning of me figuring out how to cope with it began for me which is when boric acid came into play, which is when apple cider vinegar came into play, which is when peroxide came into play because the doctors were giving me a hard time going there to get medicine. And I think that a lot of women, a lot of women are suffering from BV because they are getting it from a man and going to the doctors and the doctors telling them, it's no way you can get it from a man. It's probably your detergent. It's probably this. It's probably that. And then a woman is taking her medicine and going home and changing all those little things by herself and still having sex with her boyfriend or husband and going to the doctors and the doctor just, uh, you know, throw you in this bucket of, oh, well, I guess you have recurring BV or chronic BV because it won't go away. So here's your medicine. And, you know, like, I don't know to tell you when really it is the man who needs the medicine. It will change your life. So my theory that I came up with, like I said, I'm no doctor, I'm no nurse, I'm none of that, no scientist. But what, just from the way I wrap my brain around it, is that I believe that a man can have the bacteria. Um, I don't think that a man can have it on his own or his body creates it on his own. I think that a man has to have sex with a woman to have BV. But once that bacteria, once he's inside of that bacteria, like if you have, this is you, you have BV, and this is the man, and he goes all up inside of that bacteria and pulls it out, I think that he then can have the bacteria, and then he will continuously keep giving it back to you, no matter how much medicine you take. If you put boric acid in and your BV is gone, the moment his bacteria goes back in you, you're going to get BV again. The same way, like a lot of women say, it's because a man is cheating. I think that if this is some girl that he cheated with and she got BV, he puts it in her, brings it out, he had bacteria, he's going to come home to you and then stick it in you and then it's going to give you BV. That's why I think that doctors say, well, a man can't have BV or he can only cause the imbalance. It's because the man can have the bacteria. That's my theory. That's just what I believe in. This is what I know. In order to treat that bacteria, a man needs to be treated with medicine the same way women are. So after going to the doctors many of times, many of times, I came across one doctor and um, actually I'm gonna say two doctors because the one doctor that I went to first she told me about the study she was like oh my god you come here like weeks out of the month for BV medicine like you've been here for the same thing over and over she's like what's going on what's wrong I told her I'm getting BV my boyfriend is not circumcised and the doctors aren't helping me so I just come and I need my medicine and I roll out I don't want the exam. I don't need you to tell, like, just give me my medicine and I'll roll out. Let me go. And so she was like, oh my God, okay, there are a lot of women like you and there's a study going on. I'm going to give you the number to that doctor's office and you can call. I called the, um, the doctor's office. I made my appointment. I went in to submit my cultures. So when I, so to submit my cultures, I had to do the full exam. You know, she swabbed me and everything. And basically the study is to classify bv as a sti which is a sexually transmitted infection so right now it is not an std or sti because they say you cannot get it from men a men, man cannot give a woman bv right because hence it being bacterial vaginosis right so they're saying how can a man basically even have bacterial vaginosis if they don't have a, um, a vagina right so i said a dollar wow if they don't have a vagina she was like you're not crazy you're absolutely right once a man have that bacteria, he can pass the bacteria along, which is what men do, obviously. And the issue with diagnosing men is that past studies for BV are from a long time ago. It's not like BV is studied and stuff. Like I'm gonna say maybe like cancer. I think cancer is studied and studied and studied. I'm just gonna assume cancer is like study, and they come up with new um, things to you know, push the whole idea of cancer along, right? With BV, there's a study that happened on BV here, and that's it, it stopped. It wasn't no more done about BV. It was just like, okay, this is what BV is, this is where it comes from, and that's that, we're gonna leave it over here. So now years later, decades later, you have all of these women struggling with BV, and doctors, the format 
for treating BV um, is based off of the study done years ago. Okay, so the way that doctors treat it and diagnose it is based off of the format that they have for doctors to use, which is that men cannot get it or give it and it comes from soap or it comes from detergent because they don't have any information about it, right? So the, the purpose of the study is to first say that men are able to pass the bacteria. The second thing is that it can be transmitted through sex. The third thing is that men are able to carry the bacteria. It's already been done in a study. They've already tested the theory. Men are absolutely able to carry the bacteria. The fourth thing is that it needs to be classified as a STI because it is sexually transmitted. The issue with them classifying it as a STI is that they have to first come up with how to treat men because there is no treatment as of now for men. There, there's they, Doctors don't treat men. A, a man can't go to the doctor and say they have bacterial vaginosis. A doctor is gonna look at them like they're crazy because they, you know, it's something they don't treat for men. And obviously they cannot call it bacterial vaginosis with the man, you know, if a man have it. So that is a whole other thing. It's kind of like women are over here with it. And then the whole idea of a man having the bacteria is they're trying to figure out what treats it, um, the amount of medicine a man would have to take to treat it, and basically how, you know, how to go about what it is, like what, you know, what is causing a man to even get bacterial vaginosis or even get the bacteria and what they're gonna call it type of thing because it can't be bacterial vaginosis. So the thing with the whole research and the study as of now is that even though they are doctors who know that men can give it, right? The only thing a doctor can give you is medicine. There's no way a doctor can give you anything other than medicine and tell you to basically change your detergent because they do not know. They don't know what else to say or what else to do because there's no research being done on it. So her specifically with me, she explained to me that I'm so sorry that I can't do anything more besides give you the information that I know and let you know that you are not crazy and the only thing as a doctor right now that I can do is give you medicine. I wish I could give you medicine for him because he does need it. It's just that I don't know how much medicine to give you for him and there is no rule book for it. So I can't just give you anything because it's malpractice basically. So. In order for him to get medicine, you'll have to go get medicine and figure out for yourself and for the whole situation what works for you. Prior to that, I was getting metronidazole gel. I hate taking those metronidazole pills. They are disgusting. It's a no for me. But I was doing the metronidazole gel and she instead she gave me these little green pills which were clindamycin. I took her, hint, hint. I gave the pills to him changed my life the sad thing about it is of all this information i've learned um what she explained to me is that there will be no treatment for a man anytime soon like none of this will be fixed anytime soon at all because it takes that long she said it will be years before you know anything comes of her research or her study and that basically I'm just a guinea pig. When I submitted my cultures for it, I was basically just a guinea pig. Also had people ask me, DM me and ask me what pills to give him and if they can give him the metronidazole pills. Now I'm not telling y'all that y'all can give him the metronidazole pills or you can't because I really don't know. I did not give him metronidazole pills. So I don't know if the metronidazole pills will work, but the pills that I gave him were clindamycin pills, which typically treat STD. STDs and it is a, I was gonna say antibacterial. It is an antibiotic pill. You can also take the clindamycin, um, but a lot of times, like I said, doctors prescribe metro gel or metro pills, and that's normally what we take as women. The metro gel works for me. I know for some women it don't work, and it could be because women are using it so much that your body got used to it, so it's not fighting it anymore. That's when I would say maybe try clindamycin. Clindamycin is much stronger than metro gel. Another thing I would say is to wait. 
even though he's done his medicine and you're done his medicine wait maybe like a certain amount of time maybe two or three weeks to see if you get bv again like if the symptoms come back again before you have sex with him because more than likely if the bv is coming back from you and your medicine don't work one it could be coming from somewhere else and two you do not want to give him the bacteria back so everything bv is a whole it's like a whole you're t like i said a test dummy it definitely takes a lot of patience it takes a lot out of you and that's why i try to give y'all as much information as i can to kind of cope with it and figure things out for yourself what works for you what worked for me may not work for you may not work for her may not work for her but the videos that i talk about and create everybody is in the comments giving tips so read the comments I've read the comments myself and I've learned things. I just had someone tell me something about um, urea plasma. I'm not, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea what that is. I never heard of it. So I'm learning things in my own comments because I think things like that are very important to share information because things different happen to everybody. And maybe someone figured it out way more than I did or way more than she did or way more than she did and share the information and it can literally change someone's life and like I said the man taking the medicine changed my life dramatically it ain't just me my girls are in the comments holding it down so go to my TikTok read the comments you'll find out a lot of information so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you got all of the information that you wanted to hear that is the information that I know the information I found out for myself um, like I said it's been years for me years for me it was about five four or five years um and like i said i had to figure things out on my own along with learning things along the way um, i'm going to continue to post videos on youtube because i can get more information in a video and i feel like you can watch it anytime you want you can pause it you can come back to it i feel like it's just easy access um so make sure you are subscribed to my youtube channel i want to create the same girl group the same girl gang on youtube so comment down below if you deal with bv or have ever dealt with bv comment down below the things you did to cope with it or get rid of it or your go-to remedies for bv because i want to share all of that information between all of us because we all need to hear it but don't forget to subscribe and i will catch you guys in my next one i'm out peace